In this video, I wanna go over wiring a bathroom light and fan combo. Keep in mind that there's many different types, but the wiring principles should be the same. I hope people aren't getting tired of this, but I kinda of like to start the entire circuit over every time that I do one of these videos so that it just kinda of reinforces things that I've described in the past. So here's our panel box. We have our breaker. I just put a piece of electrical tape over that because it's a 20 amp breaker, but let's just pretend this is a 15 amp breaker. So in your panel box, you have your black wire that's hooked up to your breaker. I'm gonna use blue since I don't have white on white. This is going to, the neutral is gonna go over to one of the bus bars. And in your panel box, your ground can also go on the same bus bar. So I could have put the ground or the neutral on either bus bar. Now let's hop over to our fan light combo. I don't care what model you buy, it's always gonna have its own little junction box here and you're gonna have wires coming out of it. You have your ground and your neutral, but then you have a black wire and then one other wire, uh, usually red. So what happens here is the black wire will say power the fan or the light, it'll be one of the two. So let's just say the black wire here powers the light, the red wire powers the fan. And this works because you can still provide power to the fan and the light, and you're going to return the power back through the neutral. The reason I wanna show the switches last is there's one of two ways to wire this up. You can either have one switch that when you turn on the power, it powers both the fan and the light together, or you can use two switches to where one switch will control the red wire one switch will control the black wire. So if you've seen this in a house, maybe your house has this, you actually have two switches, you walk in, you can flip the first switch on, the light comes on. If you need the fan on, then you can flip on the other switch. If you live in an older home, sometimes they have both the black and the red tied together, you flip the light switch on and both the fan and the light always come on. So if you only have one switch, and you're replacing, most likely you'll be replacing your fan light combo here because if it's a newer house, they probably have them separated. Let's say you have an older house, you only have one switch and you're trying to replace your fan and your light. Then you're, and there's a imaginary junction box here. So your grounds will get tied together and your neutrals will get tied together, wire nutted together. And then you're going to bring the hot, you can technically put it on either screw, doesn't matter. So you're gonna bring your hot wire over to the switch. This is going to break the circuit. So there's power here, but there's not power here. And since you only have one wire, it's gonna look something like this, to where you're going to have your black wire coming up and you're actually going to tie these wires together. So both the black wire and the red wire will be wire nutted up to this black wire coming up to the fan light combo. So what happens is you turn on the switch and now both the light and the fan come on together. So if you do have two switches or you're planning on installing a junction box with two switches up to a fan light combo, this is what you're going to use. You're gonna use 14-3 wire. So it's 14 gauge wire, and it has the black wire, ground, red wire, which will also be hot, and your white wire. So I'm sorry this is as good as my animation skills get. It's a little bit busy here. What you have with two switches is you have your grounds wire nutted together, and then you have your neutral that's wire nutted together, and then you have your one hot wire, coming in to the first switch, but then you're also going to have to pigtail another black wire off to the other switch. So now these two screws will be hot all the time. So let's say the black wire is powering the light, the red wire is powering the fan. So you walk into the bathroom, you have power at these two screws, I want the light on. I flip the light on, now power is going through the black wire up to the light, powering the light, and then the circuit is returning the current 
back to the panel box. Same thing with the fan. If I want the fan on, I turn the switch on and then the power goes through the red wire up to the fan and then also it returns back through the neutral back to the panel box, completing your circuits. I didn't actually need a bathroom fan and light. I went ahead and bought one just because trying to help you guys out. This is going to go in our bathroom downstairs here probably in a couple years whenever we get that remodeled. But you should have something similar to this. Usually what I see is a bunch of wires coming out and you just have a tiny little junction box here. It is usually like a flat cover or something and there's a hole in here to where you can run your wire into it and you gotta cram all of the wires into it. What they gave me here is a decent sized junction box to where you have the hole that comes in and you'll use something, I like using these, where you'll stick the wire through and it's really hard to pull them back out so it secures your Romex wire going in. There's different types you can use and then what you can do is make your connections and then tuck everything in here. And this is actually a really good design. I like that they did this. Usually I have to shove a ton of wires into a small space. And just like on purpose, they're gonna make a liar out of me. Usually the ones that I hook up, there's only four wires. This one's a little bit different. There's five. It's pretty easy to tell. Your blacks will still be your hots, your whites will still be your neutrals, and of course your ground is green. So if you see something different, don't get intimidated by it. Just think it through. The first thing you can tell is, I know that the green wire is going to go to the copper wire. So you're gonna wire nut the green wire to the copper wire. And you already know as well, the neutrals can just go together. The neutrals are only creating a path back to the panel box. And you're never gonna provide enough power to either one of the hots that this neutral, that these neutral wires can't handle the load going back. All these wires are made to withstand a certain rating and you're never gonna be able to exceed that rating. So you can go ahead and just wire nut these two neutrals together. That's not a big deal. With the black wires, if you have a single switch and there's only one black wire that's going to be coming up to the fan light combo to power it, you can wire nut these together. And this is what I mean by a single switch setup. So we have 14 gauge wire, this is 14 two wire, as there's two conductors, the ground doesn't count as a conductor, it's not part, technically part of the circuit. So now we decided you can wire up the grounds together. Both of the neutrals can be wire nutted together. They don't need to be separated. So now you can go ahead and wire these up. And since you only have one switch and only one hot wire coming in, then these can be wire nutted together. And then once you're done, just cram all the wires into the box here, put your screw in, and you have a safe junction. Of course, not like I have now, with wires going everywhere, but everything connected together. Carefully put everything in, and then screw it down, and everything is safe. But now we're gonna use 14-3 wire, which means there's three conductors. 14 gauge wire, three conductors. Ground doesn't count as a conductor. Here's your three conductors. You have two hots and a neutral. Well, you already know that you can wire nut the two grounds together. And you also know that you can wire nut the two neutrals together. So in this case, obviously they didn't denote which wire is for the fan and which one's for the light, but it's pretty simple. Here's the wire that's going to your fan. And this one has two prongs. You know it has to get plugged in right here. So now you just flip this over. Okay, so now I know that it's this wire here that's going to be the fan wire. This one's going to be for the light. So of course you're gonna need to know which, which wire, the red one or the black one, is your fan 
or your light. So if I said that my red wire is for my fan, then these two wires would get wire nutted together and these two wires would get wire nutted together. After that, you just carefully tuck everything down into the box again and close it up properly and you're ready to go. And part of the reason that you're going to use this connector is to connect the Romex wire tightly to the fixture. But also, when you're wiring one of these up, usually you're just gonna have a pretty good length of wire sitting up above the ceiling. And that's so you can go ahead and wire everything in and, and kind of manipulate everything around the way that you need to. And of course, since I'm not installing this, I didn't strip any of the Romex wires. I didn't wire not anything together. I don't need to hear anything from, you know, a 30 year master electrician about like this, that, and the other thing. This is basically just showing which wires go to, which Romex wires go to which wires on the unit. And so I'm just kind of showing you some tips on how to have to install, how to wire this up. As far as installing it and things like that, that's all going to be specific to whatever model you get. So that was just a really brief overview of how the circuits work with these units. If you have any other questions, maybe go back and look at some of our other electrical videos. We have a ton of different electrical videos that will help you understand different principles about electricity. And once again, electricity is very dangerous, but don't let this stuff intimidate you. Just kind of think through the circuits and how this stuff's supposed to work. So as I mentioned earlier, even though I was expecting to see four wires, there's five wires here, but using the principles that I already know, I'm able to work through how this is supposed to be wired and get the job done. That does it for this video. Still super cold here in Western Pennsylvania, so I'm going inside. Also, I kind of noticed that my gloves were making a mess. Sorry about that, and sorry for my poor animation skills, but glad to make this video, glad to help. Thanks for watching.